Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. President Trump asked the U.S. Supreme Court to hear the transgender military case. We review the changing role of chaplains in the United States, and the Israeli defense minister resigns over Gaza ceasefire. Former Navy chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. President Trump has asked the United States Supreme Court to hear a case about transgenders serving in the military. Associated Press reports that the Trump administration asked the Supreme Court last Friday to issue an unusually quick expedited ruling on the Trump administration's Pentagon policy of restricting military service by some brand new, newly recruited transgender people. Trump is not firing any member of the military, but they're gonna stop recruiting new ones if they're confused about which bathroom to use. It's the fourth time in recent months that the administration has sought to bypass lower courts that have blocked some of his more controversial proposals and he, President Trump is pushing those decisions to the high court, which now has a conservative majority, at least five to four, we hope, that will weigh in quickly on these kinds of divisive issues. That's because the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which is a frequent target of criticism by President Donald Trump, is involved in three of those cases. And the liberal Ninth Circuit is the most overturned by the Supreme Court by like a three to one margin over other courts in terms of the number of cases that go up. President Trump's recent salvo against the quote, Obama judge who ruled against his asylum policy, for example, the immigration issue. Not one of the issues currently serving before the, are currently before the Supreme Court, which, which prompted Chief Justice John Roberts to fire back some criticism at the president for the first time for feeding perceptions of a biased judiciary. Well, you tell me, do you think these judges are biased? I think President Trump might be right about that in some cases. But in this particular military case, where the Obama administration has been, had been allowing transgenders to serve openly and use opposite gender bathrooms, which caused confusion among the troops, President Trump reversed that. And then his administration argued that the Supreme Court should step in because an appeals court ruled that the case, quote, involves an issue of imperative public importance, the authority of the US military to determine who may serve in the nation's armed forces, end quote. Of course, a liberal judge, maybe one of those Obama judges he's talking about, had ruled that transgenders can serve in the military. These judges are just making up policies to overturn the commander in chief. Well then, in a statement, Peter Wren, an attorney with Lambda Legal, the lesbian lawyers group, which brought one of the challenges to the transgender military policy, called the Trump administration's action last Friday, quote, a highly unusual step that is wildly premature and inappropriate, they say, end quote. But the Pentagon initially lifted its ban on transgender troops serving openly in the military in 2016 under President Barack Obama's administration. Lifted the ban, I don't know how he did that when Congress never lifted the ban. But the Trump administration then reversed 
the Obama decree and revisited that policy with Trump ultimately issuing an order banning most new transgender troops from being recruited into the military. Of course, the exception is they can still serve if they came out during the two year ban or two year lift of the ban. So a lot of transgenders now are openly serving and they will not be kicked out. But several lawsuits were filed over the administration's policy change to stop recruiting new transgenders with lower courts all ruling against the Trump administration. All those liberal judges forced the military to eat this bad policy. And now President Trump is appealing to the US Supreme Court. And that's the news. Our thanks to AP for most of that report. I had some color commentary thrown in just to add some salt and pepper, you know, make it a little spicy for you. But I am shocked and we need to take a moment and discern the spirits. Forget about whether we have confused men wearing women's uniforms or confused women wearing men's uniforms and going into opposite gender bathrooms. Let's set those people aside. Who are the policy makers? Let's compare the policy of President Barack Obama to President Donald Trump. One is listening to the spirit of God. One is or was listening to demonic spirits and the spirit of the devil. How can you tell? Now, some of you liberals out there, Rachel Maddow, MSNBC, if you're tuning into my show, you're probably saying, oh no, Klingenschmitt's off. It's Donald Trump who's being influenced by a demon because he won't let those transgenders serve in the military. And I'm gonna say no. And the way I can, the way I can say no, it's actually President Obama who's being influenced by a demonic spirit is by examining the biblical standard of morality applied by each of these men. One president says there are no genders. Men can be women, women can be men. And that's the policy of the Obama administration. But is it biblical or is it evil? The Trump administration is crafting their policy in this case, at least in harmony with, probably not inspired by, but at least in harmony with the Bible and the word of God, which says in Genesis chapter five, that when God created Adam and Eve, he created them male and female. He blessed them and called them mankind in the day they were created. President Trump is operating out of the spirit of God who wrote the Bible. So a moment to pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name that as the Trump administration appeals to the US Supreme Court, I pray for a victory that the Supreme Court would establish justice for all of the military and especially ruling that the commander in chief not only has the power to do good and protect the military from this gender confusion, but the previous commander in chief does not have the power to do evil. Father, we pray that good godly policies are established to protect every man, woman in the US military in Jesus name. Amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, we'll discuss the changing role of chaplains in the United States. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I wanna tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage, but the way God intended it, he always wanted us to see his view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. 
it's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You want to have this important four-part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll-free prayer line at 866-Obey-God. Again, that's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org you too can have a godly marriage. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our next story comes from the Sunbury News who reports on the changing role of chaplains in the United States. Not just the military, but in other institutions like prisons and hospitals and nursing homes. Sunbury News reports that more and more institutions across the United States are hiring chaplains and other spir spiritual care providers. And some are places that have long employed chaplains, but others may come as a surprise. For example, are you surprised to know that the Massachusetts Institute of Technology recently installed a new chaplain? Various police departments are ad adding additional chaplains also, horse racing tracks. All those gamblers out there, they certainly need chaplains, don't they? Not only to bless the horses, but maybe to help some of those addicts get off of the gambling bug. At the same time, chaplaincy positions continue to exist in traditional places like legislatures, the US House and Senate, or of course the military, I was a Navy chaplain, now I happen to be a nursing home chaplain, continue to serve the Lord in that way. But given the growing number of Americans who describe themselves as atheistic, agnostic, or nothing in particular, this can appear puzzling. How can chaplains help people of no faith or of unknown faith? And why is chaplaincy growing when institutional religious affiliations are on the decline? Well, the presence of chaplains in America and their institutions goes way back to the Revolutionary War when they first served in the American military. The first commander in chief, General George Washington, established the chaplain corps. Uh, in fact, even before 1776, and chaplains helped perform many rituals and were present for patriotic ceremonies and events. And since that day, military chaplains have long been uniformed, non-combatant, they don't carry weapons, but they are commissioned officers with rank. Later, other institutions like prisons and hospitals came to employ them to provide spiritual care. In federal prisons, for example, chaplains provide a ministry to prisoners, along with support for behavioral modification. You know, like changing the, helping to change the hearts of the prisoners so when they get out, they don't recede or return to crime. In earlier eras, chaplains, like the American population in general, were overwhelmingly Protestant, Catholic, or Jewish. They mostly cared for people from their own faith traditions. But now there is a changing role. These traditional roles are changing and new research has come across some unique examples of organizations and people providing support to individuals and communities 
in a variety of situations. Religious studies scholar Winifred Sullivan, for example, describes chaplains today as secular priests or ministers without portfolios. Their work increasingly is called spiritual care, she argues, and is understood by many as actually required by the First Amendment of the US Constitution. And that's the news. Our thanks to the Sunbury News for that update. Let me tell you, the, there are actual court case precedents where you have to have chaplains, for example, in institutions. If you're gonna put somebody in prison or heaven forbid, put them on a Navy ship <laughs> and send them out to sea, you have to provide for their religious freedom and spiritual care. For our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines, the Constitution actually requires that they be provided chaplains to help them exercise their religious faith. You know, you don't forsake your religion just because you put on a uniform or even just because you go to jail. People who do bad things still have a First Amendment fundamental right to freedom of religion, even in prison. Or just because you grow old and go to a nursing home doesn't mean you have to stop being religious. These people deserve spiritual care. And it's our job as chaplains to provide that care. While chaplains typically in minister to institutions and not to churches, God also gave pastors to minister to churches. In fact, here's a review of the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter four. The Bible says there are five different kinds of elders or ordained ministers that Jesus himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. Now, what is the chaplain? I don't see that name on the list, but the chaplain is pretty much close to being a pastor, but they serve an institution instead of a church. Let's pray about this. Would you pray that God will provide more chaplains, more opportunities to minister in institutions across America? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we pray for more religious freedom for people in uh, corporations or people in uh, jails or people in uh, serving in the police force or, the, or as a fireman or, or in the military or in hospitals or in nursing homes. Father, we pray that every institution in America will, will consider and actually hire a chaplain. And they don't all have to be Christian chaplains either, but Father, I pray that every chaplain will be blessed to facilitate for the religious needs and freedoms of every person to whom they minister. Father, we pray that as these opportunities are filled, that you will empower Christian chaplains to preach the gospel and pray in Jesus' name without hindrance. That the true spiritual needs of God's people will be met through their humble service. We pray your blessing upon chaplains all across America in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take another short break. When we come back, the Israeli defense minister has resigned over the Gaza ceasefire. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Did you know religious freedom is under fire in our military today? Our troops do not have protection. For example, military chapels are now being desecrated by homosexual wedding ceremonies on bases in all 50 states. Our troops are now also face punishment if they dare to object to sharing common sleeping quarters or common shower facilities, or if chaplains dare to quote the Bible during private counseling that declares that homosexuality is a sin. Nobody in our military should be forced to violate their Christian conscience, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Let's take action today for religious freedom. Would you sign a petition with me? Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. Let's defend religious freedom for our troops. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. 
Are you frustrated at the direction your country is headed? Are you ready to fight for a cause and change the world? Do you believe God has called Christians to make a difference? Announcing a new book by Chaplain Gordon Klingenschmidt entitled How to Liberate the World in 30 Days, a step-by-step guide to take back your country. Dr. Alan Keyes wrote the foreword saying, This book needs to be placed in the hands of every millennial and Bible-believing pastor in America. This book teaches 30 powerful political tools in a 30-day devotional that will change your life and give you power. It comes with 15 inspiring true stories of political victory. You don't even need to get elected to take back your government. But if you read this book, you just might get elected too. Order your copy today. It's available in the Superstore at WND.com on Amazon, and you can get the first chapter free right now if you visit the website schoolofliberty.org. That's schoolofliberty.org. It's time to take back your country. Defending your religious freedom, here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from Associated Press, who says that the Israeli defense minister has resigned over the Gaza ceasefire deal that ended the recent skirmish when 500 rockets were launched out of the Gaza Strip into Israeli territory towards innocent civilians. Israel's defense minister abruptly resigned in protest over a ceasefire. He thought they should have been more aggressive, but instead Prime Minister Netanyahu backed off and did not continue aggressive moves in the Gaza Strip and he sort of gave in a little bit to Gaza militants who launched these rockets and then run away and hide and immediately call for a ceasefire. Why didn't they do the ceasefire before they started firing on Israeli citizens? Well, this was a move that rocked the Israeli political scene and seems likely to bring about early elections, although not yet, maybe another year, but The man who resigned, Avigdor Lieberman, said that the ceasefire amounted to a surrender to terrorism. After two days of heavy fighting, I was there in Israel during the fighting, I saw the effects of it, and that he could no longer serve in the government that endorsed that kind of ceasefire. Lieberman had demanded a far stronger Israeli response to the most intense round of rocket fire against Israel since a 50 day war in 2014. But appeared to have been overruled by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and so he resigned. Lieberman's resignation delivers a major blow to Netanyahu's fragile coalition in the Knesset, where his government, if I recall, uh, is only assembled by 61 out of 120, a little more than half, of the members of the Knesset align with Netanyahu through their religious, through their party coalitions. And Lieberman's resignation then sparked calls for early elections where Netanyahu could be forced out by the public. Lieberman said he hoped that in the coming days that a date would be set for a new vote The opposition parties, of course, joined his call. They're always eager to topple Netanyahu, but Netanyahu survived. Other people, the majority of the government, continue to stand with Bibi and continue to stand with the narrow one seat majority, even without Lieberman and his nationalist Israeli Betenu faction. By the way, There now, some are predicting that Netanyahu's coalition is unlikely to survive until the actual scheduled elections, which are set for November of 2019, unless called earlier by a collapse of the government. But the party of another Netanyahu rival, Naftali Bennett, has already announced that if he is not appointed defense minister, he will also quit the election, or quit the coalition which would automatically trigger early elections, but Bennett did not resign. Given Bennett's sometimes rocky relationship with Netanyahu, I think Bennett's in the Jewish home party, Netanyahu's in the Likud party, but they're allies, right? But Bennett threatened to resign also, and that would have blown up the coalition and 
forced early elections, but Bennett backed down, later claiming that he was checkmated by Netanyahu, who holds certain political cards. Uh, like a chess master, Netanyahu was able to keep his government from collapsing. Yair Lapid, head of the, co- the opposition party, Yesh Atid, said, quote, the countdown has begun to the end of Netanyahu's term in office. But his prediction is a little premature. By the way, Lieberman's resignation did take effect within 48 hours and Netanyahu will take over the defense portfolio on an interim basis. So he is also currently serving as his own party's foreign minister, his own party's defense minister, Netanyahu's the chief minister, he's the prime minister, he's wearing three hats. And he's also coming under heavy criticism for agreeing to the ceasefire prematurely, especially from his own political base. And in rocket battered towns in Southern Israel that are typically strongholds of his ruling Likud party. And that's the news, our thanks to AP for that report. The Bible says this in Isaiah 49, thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, their Holy One, to him whom man despises, to him who the nations abhor, to the servant of rulers, kings shall see and arise, princes also shall worship, because the Lord is, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, and he has chosen you. Benjamin Netanyahu, perhaps chosen by God for this moment in time. We're out of time, but we're gonna take a short break. After this, I'll have a word to conclude the show. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Do you ever wonder how to discern your own thoughts from the thoughts that come to you from the Holy Spirit or angels or invisible demons? I'm Dr. Chaps and you've seen us talk about the gift of discerning of spirits. In fact, I wrote my PhD dissertation how to see the Holy Spirit, angels and demons. But now we have an exciting 17 part video Bible study on a four disc DVD set that you can get for your small group or your church. If you just visit PrayInJesusName.org and offer a suggested donation of $99 or call us toll free at 866-ObeyGod, get this 17 part video series and for a limited time only, we'll throw in the book for free. Visit PrayInJesusName.org, get this important Bible study series for you and your church, or call us at 866-ObeyGod right now. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Proverbs 11, the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters others will be watered himself. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. We'll see you next time. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-ObeyGod. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.